In this lecture, we will discuss short QT syndrome, SQTS, a rare cardiac disorder characterized by a shortened QT interval on an ECG. We will explore its genetic basis, ion channel mutations, clinical features, diagnostic criteria, treatment options, exercise tolerance, and genetic counseling. Let's dive into this fascinating topic. Short QT syndrome exhibits both familial and sporadic cases, suggesting a genetic etiology. Studies have unraveled the inheritance patterns associated with this syndrome, revealing an autosomal dominant pattern with variable expressivity and penetrance. Researchers have identified several genetic mutations involved, most commonly affecting potassium channel genes KCNH2, KCNQ1, and KCNJ2, which encode for ion channels involved in cardiac repolarization. These mutations result in dysfunctional ion channels, altering the electrical properties of cardiomyocytes, and consequently, shortening the QT interval. In-depth analysis of ion channel mutations associated with short QT syndrome has shed light on their specific effects on the repolarization phase of the cardiac action potential. The identified mutations predominantly affect the function of the Rapid Delayed Rectifier Potassium Channel ICR, Slow Delayed Rectifier Potassium Channel X, and Inward Rectifier Potassium Channel IK1. Impairment of ICR hampers the repolarization process, whereas dysregulation of ICS and IK1 leads to exaggerated repolarization and a shortened QT interval. The development of short QT syndrome involves dysregulation of various potassium channels, including ICR, ICS, and IK1. Dysfunctions in these channels contribute to a shorter QT interval in patients with SQTS. Understanding these abnormalities is crucial to understanding the pathogenesis of the syndrome. Recognition of the characteristic clinical manifestations and symptoms is pivotal for accurate diagnosis and management of short QT syndrome. Patients with SQTS often present with episodes of syncope, palpitations, and, in severe cases, sudden cardiac death. The identification of these warning signs is crucial, as prompt intervention can prevent life-threatening cardiac events. Recognizing the clinical significance of these symptoms is a key aspect of managing patients with short QT syndrome. The diagnosis of short QT syndrome hinges on the interpretation of ECG findings. Various criteria and parameters aid in identifying SQTS through analysis of the QT interval, corrected QT interval, QTC, and other relevant ECG markers. The diagnostic ECG findings often include a QTC interval of less than 360 milliseconds in males or 370 milliseconds in females, without evidence of abnormal ventricular repolarization morphology. Familiarity with these criteria enables accurate recognition and diagnosis of short QT syndrome. Distinguishing between genetic and acquired causes of QT shortening is crucial in understanding the etiology and management of short QT syndrome. While SQTS represents an inherited form of QT shortening, acquired conditions, such as drug-induced QT shortening or electrolyte imbalances, are differential diagnoses. Careful evaluation of patient history, Medication use, and laboratory investigations helps differentiate between these factors, aiding in appropriate management strategies for patients with short QT syndrome. Assessing the risk of life-threatening cardiac events is an integral part of managing patients with short QT syndrome. Various risk stratification tools and scoring systems facilitate the identification of individuals at higher risk. These tools incorporate clinical parameters, genetic findings, and ECG characteristics to estimate the probability of arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death. By utilizing these assessment tools, clinicians can tailor the management approach and provide appropriate interventions to minimize the risk of adverse outcomes in SQTS patients. The management of short QT syndrome involves a multimodal approach, including pharmacological interventions. Antiarrhythmic medications, such as quinidine or amiodarone, are commonly prescribed to prolong the QT interval and restore normal cardiac repolarization. Understanding the mechanisms of action, potential side effects, and tailored dosing regimens of these medications is essential in optimizing therapeutic outcomes for patients with SQTS. Catheter ablation, a minimally invasive interventional procedure, has emerged as a potential therapeutic strategy for managing short QT syndrome. By targeting and selectively ablating the arrhythmogenic substrate, this approach aims to restore normal electrical conduction and repolarization in the heart. The effectiveness of catheter ablation in eliminating arrhythmias and improving clinical outcomes in patients with SQTS is a promising avenue to explore. Implantable cardioverter defibrillators, ICDs, play a crucial role in preventing sudden cardiac death in patients with short QT syndrome. By constantly monitoring the heart's electrical activity, ICDs can promptly detect and terminate life-threatening ventricular arrhythmias. The indications, benefits, and limitations of ICD placement in the management of SQTS must be carefully considered to optimize outcomes and enhance patient safety. 
short QT syndrome can significantly impact exercise tolerance and athletic performance. Due to the potential risk of life-threatening arrhythmias during physical exertion, cautious recommendations regarding physical activity are essential. Tailoring exercise guidelines based on individual risk stratification, symptomatology, and genetic findings ensures the safe participation of SQTS individuals in physical activities while minimizing adverse outcomes. Given the inherited nature of short QT syndrome, genetic counseling and family screening play a pivotal role in managing affected individuals and identifying at-risk family members. Genetic testing, analysis of family pedigrees, and comprehensive counseling regarding reproductive choices are integral components of a holistic approach when dealing with SQTS. Implementing effective strategies for genetic counseling and family screening is essential in the accurate diagnosis, management, and prevention of SQTS. In conclusion, short QT syndrome is a complex and intriguing cardiac disorder. Knowledge of its genetic basis, ion channel mutations, diagnostic criteria, management strategies, and impact on patients is essential for optimal care. This video aims to provide you with the necessary knowledge and skills for managing short QT syndrome in your clinical practice.